Hello and welcome to another Mothership maintenance vlog. On our Amal Super Maramu sailboat we have a B3 40 litre 230 volt quick boiler uh, which heats our hot water. Not only does the element heat up from the generator it also heats up from the shore power. It also acts as a heat exchanger for the engine. So the coolant water from the engine enters here and then circulates inside and then exits here back into the engine and that also eats up our hot water. So this maintenance blog was actually done in Spain, in Almiramar, which is notorious for its uh, windy conditions. And I'm sorry about the wind noise at the first half of this maintenance blog. Um, I couldn't do anything about that. It's just the way that the environment is in that part of the world. We woke up this morning and the electric had tripped. And um, we weren't sure why. We thought it was the RCD, but the RCD's okay. Um, and it was tripping the pod as well. So to cut a long story short, we uh, unplugged everything to try and isolate where it was and it was still tripping so we couldn't work out what it was but the only thing that's still hardwired into the consumer unit is the battery charger and the hot water now every electrician you talk to every boat electrician saying when you usually have a problem with the RCD tripping and you can't work it out it's usually anything that's coming in contact with water which is things like kettles and water heaters and so we disconnected the water heater we took the neutral off the water heater and it's fine, everything's working fine. So we know we need to replace the element on the water heater now. In the middle of the holidays now, and we've got no hot water until we can get an element. But at least it's a relief we've got the electrics back on anyway. Uh, single pole only disconnects the live. A double pole switch actually disconnects the live and the neutral, and so the whole circuit is then uh, broken. Whereas I thought once these are switched off, that's it, it's fine. Uh, apparently it's not. So we learn something new every day. The boiler element um, was tripping out our RCD on the consumer unit, so we've got no hot water at the moment. Um, so I need to get the element out. I've got the thermostat here, but I can't get it out because this is the cockpit drain which runs from the cockpit to under the boat um, and obviously you can't move it. So I've had to drain all of the water out of the boiler um, so I can move it back and along and to get the element out here. I'm just undoing these straps which is holding it in place and I'm holding that, hoping that will give me enough leverage to get these out. So I just need to disconnect the, uh, the wires in here. Yeah, you can actually see a bit of corrosion down there and a bit of damp as well inside. Luckily there's a drain plug down here. So that's 54 millimeters, so I haven't got anything like that in my toolbox. Um, I think what you need is a proper plumber's immersion wrench, which I haven't got. And this doesn't fit in the gap either. I've just found these um, slip lock adjustable pliers on board, which is really handy. Okay, didn't drain it out enough. I think even though I um, drained the water system and turned the water pump off to stop it refilling, I think a lot of it's backflowed into the boiler and uh, that's how come I'm getting so much out even though I thought I'd emptied the hot water system. So the water stopped dripping out of the element section now so I think we're past halfway. The colour of the water is getting sort of murkier and browner. I suppose all of the particles and the rust collected at the bottom of the tank and they're all coming out now. In hindsight, it probably would have been better to put a bucket. This has taken me forever. Oh my god. God, look at that. And that is only after about two years. That's calcium buildup. It's unbelievable. And the anode, which was there, has completely disappeared. So it's no wonder we we're having problems with it. The only thing really that will dissolve that much calcium is acid. So I use a brick cleaner, which is only one euro from any DIY store, and it's a 20% hydrochloric acid mix. Still, it makes for a good chemistry demo for homeschooling. Larry, come see this. Is it melting? You don't see it doesn't melt at all. Because I didn't have a replacement at hand, 
when I took the old element out, it obviously left a great big hole in the boiler. And because of the lack of of any valve, any shut off valve leading into the boiler, um, it meant that the whole water system had to be closed down. So that's gone on my uh, things to do list to put an isolation valve on here. So the only way I could kind of make sure that we still had water that night was to basically put the old element back in and block that hole. Um, I've ordered a new one and it's just arrived today. So now I'm going to take the old element back out and replace it with the new one. I borrowed a 55 mil socket off a friend just to give it a try but unfortunately the earth screw here stops it getting in so I can't use that either. So I'm back to just use my uh, adjustable wrench. So we spent the whole of Christmas without any hot water and without a freezer as well. Hasn't been great but we managed. I've run the taps to depressurize the water system and I've turned the water pump off so the only water left in is in the pipes and in here so I just need to drain that off before I can take the element out here. There's a bit of a vacuum in there, so I've just cracked the uh, element open a bit to let some air in. And now it's running freely. So this is the old element and uh, I thought it might be worth trying to rescue because I could clean off the calcium here and put a new anode in. But then I noticed there was some calcification just on the inside, which would probably suggest there was a leak there at some point. So uh, it's probably not worth trying to rescue that. This is the new one that arrived from SVB. You can see side by side, that's the one with the anode and that's the one with the anode that's completely disintegrated. And that's only after about two years. This was 65 euros and with the thermostat, it's another 30 euros which is ridiculously expensive. You can get them from local plumbing shops, something very, very similar, which works. Um, I've never tried one and I couldn't find a local plumbing shop which supplied it. And as it was Christmas and we needed to get the hot water running as fast as possible, um, I just ordered it and got it sent out to Spain. And uh, here it is at great expense. So all in all, by the time you've bought the seals and the element and the thermostat, um, you don't get much change out of 100 euros. So one of our patrons sent me this proboscope, which is fantastic. So I'm going to take a look inside. And it's pretty grim inside there. Okay, so I've got some white vinegar here. So I'm just going to put that in the bottom of the of the tank and swirl it around and just agitate it a bit. Um, and it should hopefully break up some of those calcium deposits. Um, and then I'll drain it off again and then I'll fill it with water. Because it's in such an awkward space, I'm going to use uh, the end of a jerry can to get the uh, vinegar in there. So I've let the vinegar sit there for about an hour. Um, but what I think I'll do now is I'll put the element back in and then re-pressurise the system and let the vinegar go through just to clear out any deposits in there. I mean, it means the hot water is going to stink of vinegar for a while, but uh, it's a small sacrifice. So, checking the manual, um, it does say that you should uh, open up the release valve uh, every so often to release any um, calcium deposits in the bottom. Although the amount of calcium I've got in that boiler back there, I don't think the release valve is actually going to Cut it. So what I'll try and do in the next service is circulate some vinegar through the system and just try and keep that calcium at bay. So this is the old thermostat and that's the new one and I've just tested them and they both test the same so I'm presuming the thermostats, the old one is fine. Complete closed circuit, there's nothing leaking there. So uh, I might just put that back in and see what happens. So at least I've got this new one as a spare. If you want to change the temperature, all you do is you simply turn this red dial around. It's got the temperature written on there. I mean, at the moment we're set to 90, which is quite high, so I might just knock it down to about 70. So the other thing I've done is I've moved the element, I've turned it around slightly so that the terminals 
uh, away from the earth and it's easier to get to and it means if there is a little dribble of water it's not going to um, short that out. So now I've turned those terminals around I can get the electric screwdriver in there which is very handy. Okay, I got it all back together yesterday um, and then late last night it was too late to film but um, I had it all sealed and then I give it another quarter turn and broke the seal. There was an o-ring and a sort of a flat rubber seal um, and one of them kept tripping the other one if I over tightened it and so I had to depressurize the system again and then repressurize the system again. Uh, so it was a bit of a battle and it was dark so as I say I couldn't film much um, but only use one seal don't over tighten it and use plenty of PTFE tape which is what I did last night and uh, now we've got a watertight seal. Mm. So that's it, that's the uh, boiler serviced and I always make sure now that I have a spare element on board just in case I have the same job to do again. So I'll just wait 10 minutes, see if it heats up. Yep, we've got warm water again. Go back in business. Next job. So thanks for watching and a special thank you to our patrons who keep us going through good times and bad. If you found this blog useful and you're the type of person who likes to return a favor, then you can buy me a beer by following the links to PayPal or Patreon in the description below. And now you can also buy one of our crew shirts by following the links to our merch store 